so excited for this. Let me pop over here so you can see my mug. Hello everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val and I am going to be your host this morning and for the next few weeks for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I hope you all have had a wonderful holiday season, have uh, had a happy new year. Um, also happy new year everyone. I'm so glad to see all of you folks coming back. I see Sam Peterson in the chat, um, Ted, Biola, Glenda, RB, General Kenobi. Hello there. Um, I see Lindsay, Fairy, Z. Oh, it's so good to see all of you folks. I'm so pumped to be here. Um, this is very exciting. I have the wonderful pleasure of being able to kick off the daily creative challenges for Photoshop for the new year. Um, so obviously I'm very stoked about that. Um, if you were wondering who I am greeting and you don't see any of these people I've named in the chat, you are probably over on YouTube. Um, so please come over to behance.net slash live. That is where I am going to be reading the chat. Um, but what's up with you guys? Do you guys have a good, uh, good new year? You guys ready to jump into a brand new year of epic design? Um, Ralph, welcome in. Uh, Tanya, hello. Uh, Mwendwa, welcome in. Paula, Gez, Chris Olson, it's good to see all of you folks. Um, all right, so what I'm going to be doing this morning is I am going to dive into a little bit about the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, um, where you can find all of the assets, resources, and all that good stuff if you would like to join me and participate. Um, and then, because this is our kind of intro challenge, and we won't be getting into challenge one until tomorrow, um, I'm going to walk you guys through um, some cool little design prompts or design tasks um, that will help you to kind of design a Behance case study cover um, where you can, um, that you can use for the case study that you will be um, possibly putting all of your challenge entries into. Um, and I'm going to show you some great resources, great free resources where you can get some inspiration, get some assets and things, and also um, how I kind of go about creating a piece or a project or a graphic um, from scratch uh, and, and, and kind of how I use graphic elements to sketch because I know not everybody here in chat has like a Cintiq or a tablet or not everybody here really wants to draw or sketch with a stylus. Um, so we're going to sketch with some graphic elements today um, to kind of get the creative juices flowing and prepare for our uh, coming weeks of challenges. So um, hello drama. Welcome in. It's good to see you. We have some new faces in chat. Yes, I noticed. Welcome in. If you are brand new to Adobe Live, if you've never been here um, for a live session and have only caught the replays, if you are just stumbling in here for the very first time um, and you're not sure what's going on, please say hello to us in the chat. We are wonderful and friendly. Uh, we love to make new friends and we'd love to answer any questions you may have about um, Behance or Adobe Live and welcome you to the Adobe fam. Um, all right, so I'm going to pop over here right quick. Um, this is the uh, landing page for Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. If you go to behance.net uh, slash challenge slash Photoshop, you will come to here. And you'll know you're in the right place because it'll say January 3rd to January 28th. So for the next two weeks, I am going to be teaching these classes live. Uh, and then after those two weeks for the following two weeks, we will have replays of these challenges. So if you miss a challenge, um, there will be aired on uh, other days. Um, so you definitely will have a chance to jump back in here with the live chat and hang out. Um, but if you scroll down on this page, you will see that we actually have challenges that are locked here. And these are going to be our nine challenges for this challenge segment. Um, and after we do these challenges, there will be a link here where you can, number one, download the starter file, which I have created starter files for all of these challenges for you folks to uh, download and get started with me. So you have kind of a starting point. Um, but there will also be a button um, on each of these challenges where you can click and go and watch the replay. So you don't have to wait for those two weeks to come back around if you'd like to revisit one. Even if it's the same day that one of the challenges aired, you can come back, uh, you can watch the replay, you can go through it again if you need a little bit of um, recap, uh, which is cool. You can also click this big blue button up here. Um, right now it says my name because I'm logged into my account, but if you are not registered for the challenge, you can click that, it'll register you, you can get all 
the things that you need. We've got a little one through four here up at the top for how does it work. Um, each day you receive a challenge. So all of these, as I said, will be unlocked uh, each day, one new one each day. Um, you can join the community chat, which is our Discord, which I'll get into in a moment here. You can watch the daily show to get started and ask questions. So as I said, all of these challenges will be live the first time for the first two weeks. So you can jump in here, ask some questions, make some friends, all that good stuff. Um, and then you can share your work and get feedback from other mentors and participants, which is also hearkening back to the Discord. We've got awesome mentors, um, including myself, uh, in the Discord. So as you start to create your uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge entries, um, as you finish them, or as you just need help um, and a little bit of guidance for your project, you can post them into the Discord and get some feedback and all that good stuff, um, which is really, really great. And if you are looking for any past challenges, you can scroll down here and all of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges that we have done in the past are archived here by date. Um, and you can go through and get all of these. And this is kind of what these challenges that are locked up here will look like once they are activated. You'll see a little icon, you'll see the title of the challenge, you will get a little spiel about what the challenge is all about, you will have a get started button which is where you can download that starter file that I mentioned to you and then you can click watch video if you need to go back to the video. Um, as for the discord, if you head over here to bit.ly slash ps discord, you want to make sure that p and s are capitalized so you get to the right place. You will be able to join our discord community, Introduce yourself, chat with friends, get some help from mentors, um, and keep up to date with everything that we are doing over here on Adobe Live. So definitely check that out. Uh, but the first thing that I would really like to do today um, is actually dive into Photoshop because we are going to start creating um, a cover for our Beyonce case study because that is, we're going to need a place to kind of house all of this stuff. Um, so I've got my Photoshop open here. I'm going to pop over to my screen um, and I have created a file called Behance cover. Um, if you would like to create a Behance cover along with me, you want to make sure that your specifications um, for your image size are 808 pixels by 632 pixels, I believe. Um, because that is going to allow you to make sure that you don't have to crop anything. If you want to make your file bigger, um, that is fine. When you upload a cover to Behance, it will actually allow you to zoom in and out and kind of crop the image however you like. Um, but if you make it 808 by 632, um, it will be the perfect specifications. You won't have to crop anything out and know that all of the things that you design on this cover are going to be showing, which is awesome. Um, uh, is that, uh, Vladka? Welcome in. Um, thank you, Annika. Also, save your work, Annika. Good to see you. Um, little drama, welcome in. I like to animate, so I like to use Adobe Animate. Amazing! Well, um, if you are interested in creating case studies uh, for your animation projects, it's always great to have a little bit of graphic design knowledge so that you can create a presentation for your work. So this is a great place for you to be. Um, if you've never attempted this or you have, but maybe need a little extra support, we're going to be diving into all kinds of things um, for this challenge, which leads me to the next point. We're creating um, a Behance cover. Um, but I need to tell you kind of what I have in store for the next couple of weeks. So every single uh, challenge for the coming days are going to be based on the poster a day concept. So you folks have probably heard of poster a day. There's a lot of really wonderful designers out there who are creating like a full principal poster design every single day and have been doing them for weeks, months. I have seen a couple people that have been doing it every day for two years and that's a little much for me. I don't know that I could you know, keep up on such a recurring large project like that, but I wanted to do kind of a mini version of it. So we're doing post a day. So we're going to be designing some little graphic posts for social media or whatever you may want to use them for. And every single day is going to be a different style. Um, the goal here is 
I would really love to show you folks how to create a post in a new trending style. So cool things that you folks have probably seen larger companies um, go along with as far as style trends and all that good stuff. And I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest, most efficient way to achieve that look and that effect. Um, so if you want to call this something like poster a day, um, what I've called it in my... Um, in my files when I was preparing for this. Let me grab my text tool. Um, is I just called it this post and then in parentheses ER. Um, let me capitalize this P real quick. Poster a day. Um, so I just called it this. I thought that was kind of cute, um, you know, just because it kind of goes along with what we are, what we're doing, but also kind of looks like the poster a day challenge. Um, where's the link for a poster a day? I don't have a link for a poster a day for you, but if you Google poster a day, you will see tons of people that do that. Um, one of the people that I'm thinking of when it comes to uh, the poster a day is Temi Coker. Um, so if you folks have, you, you folks have probably heard of Tammy Coker. Uh, he was a creative resident for Adobe a while back, and um, he has been a wonderful, influential um, designer in the community ever since. Uh, and he has been on Adobe Live before. And if you look him up on Behance or just Google Tammy Coker, you will most likely find his poster a day challenge. Uh, they are fabulous and wonderful, and I highly recommend checking them out. Uh, General Kenobi, no link for you. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, you know, sometimes clients do ask you, um, do it with this uh, this person's style. Um, but I think this is a, a great opportunity, however, because um, sometimes people are looking for a very particular style. If you get a client that is a company that's trying to compete as far as marketing, um, graphic marketing and things like that on social media, they might send you some images or reference pieces to say, hey, I need something that looks like this. And it would actually benefit you to know how to do that. And if you know how to do that, then it's easier to kind of put your own personal flavor on it, you know, put your own spin and your own flair in there rather than sitting, trying to learn a new concept and copying, you know, because we don't want to do that. So um, I've just got my file laid out here. It says poster a day. I'm probably going to change this font most likely. Uh, but one of the things that I'd like to do is kind of jump in um, to where to find assets, where to find inspiration, where to find new fonts, how to choose colors and all that good stuff. Because I know a lot of people struggle with that. I know that I myself do, even though I've been doing this job professionally full time for many years, these are things that I still struggle with. So if you're having trouble with it, don't worry. It is something that happens to us all. Um, and I'm going to show you a few ways that you can overcome those obstacles very easily. Um, so one of the first things I like to do is jump into color. Now you can choose color yourself in your own uh, color picker in Photoshop, but uh, adobecolor.com or color.adobe.com is an excellent place where you can um, come and find colors to use. So when you first come here, usually you arrive on the color wheel page. Um, you were curious, yeah. Um, he is, I, I believe he has actually done some animation, Little Drama. Um, if I remember correctly, I think some of his pieces have been animated, though I don't know if he is predominantly an animator. I think he's predominantly a designer. Um, I also see Asia. Welcome in, Asia. And Rasit, welcome in. It's good to see you. Um, all right. So um, there's a lot of ways that you can actually hunt for great colors here on color.adobe.com. And a lot of people think it's just a place where you can go and find color palettes, but there are some very unique ways to actually accomplish this. Um, so when you go to the color wheel page, which is under the create tab, you can come in and you can actually choose a bunch of very different kinds of color palette modes here. Um, and you can flip through and just kind of figure out which one um, you prefer. But I really do like these because some of them, as you move um, your color around, it will actually 
choose all of the surrounding colors. So you can select a great color palette that works pretty well together. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, you can come in and do the monochromatic and just honestly just explore and see if you can find something that you really love, something that really speaks to you for a project, whatever you like. Um, I really do like the complementary colors uh, because this allows me to choose a color palette um, that I think looks really great, like this orange. Um, I really like this kind of burnt orange color here. Um, and then it gives me the greatest complementary color to orange, which I believe is blue. Um, and it gives me a blue and also a blue that is complementary to that blue it's selected. So this is also a really great way to kind of get in there um, and select some things that will look really great for your project. You can also come over to the Explore tab, um, and the Explore tab is really great because it shows you some images, and then it gives you the color palette that um, is within that image. Uh, and this really helps me personally because sometimes I don't necessarily have a color palette in mind, but tell me how many of you have felt this way. You don't have a color palette in mind, but perhaps you've seen a reference image that has some kind of atmosphere or emotion that you want to go for in your in your piece. Um, and this is true for me when it comes to graphic design um, and when it comes to painting and illustration. Um, I see something and I'm like, wow, that's, you know, that atmosphere is really great. This has like a really impactful kind of emotion behind it. And I want to create a piece that has that same vibe. Um, so taking an image, which you can actually come in um, and upload an image here, uh, and get your own color palette from that image. It's really great because maybe, you know, for example, maybe I really like this um, image of these golden leaves in this moody forest and I'm like, wow, I really like this. You can sample a color palette directly from that and then because you have seen that image um, and you've experienced that emotion that it kind of conveys, I think it gives you a better understanding of how to actually use those colors rather than just selecting random colors that don't have that emotion and that feeling connected to it, which can therefore um, help you to create a bigger and better piece. So um, definitely check this out. You can come into trends as well. Um, you can also come into libraries um, if you like, because people have like color libraries and things, but this is really cool. Um, I like to do the trends because this is um, one of those places where um, obviously you can do this in Explore as well, where they have the images, but in trends, you can kind of go through different categories um, and the different categories allow you to kind of hone down um, what specifically you are looking for. So if you're designing graphics that are going to be centered around an art piece or maybe you're doing um, graphics for like a museum curation or something like that. Going into the illustration could be great. Um, going into UI UX could be excellent as well because perhaps you are creating some kind of pitch deck for a project for a client and you need to make sure that your colors work well um, on the web. Um, things like that. Um, and it just allows you to really like I love the game design one gives you nice like pops of color. Very, very cool. Um, so please check out Adobe Color. This is a great way um, to come in and um, get some good some good color palettes that work well together and also give you a bit of history and emotional connection to the colors you're using, um, which I believe helps you use them better. Um, another place that you can go um, is Adobe Stock. Um, and Adobe Stock is something I use in two different ways. Obviously, I love to dive in and grab stock images um, to use in my pieces, um, but there is, number one, a free version of Adobe Stock. So if you come over here into the free tab, um, everything that you find here is free to use. You can license them just like you would license anything um, that you would pay for. It goes directly into your Adobe libraries um, and you can sort them into which libraries you wish for them to go to. And then you can use those stock images and stock templates and um, anything that you are hunting for in your projects, which is really great. Um, Photoshop DCC brought to you by Adobe Color and Adobe Stock. Yeah, you know, kind of, kind of. This is a great way to get things. And a lot of 
these colors. A lot of these stock photos that you will find here are actually going to be used in our coming projects um, because I made sure to include um, some links and things so that you folks can dive into these resource sites yourselves um, and either use the same images that I'm using or I kind of help you give you some specifications so you can hunt for resources on your own. Um, but this is an excellent place to go. If another thing that I like to use Adobe Stock for is I kind of use it like Pinterest sometimes where I will type in um, graphic trend phrases um, and hunt around for what, you know, what are people cr creating? What are people looking to download assets wise to help them to create? Um, and this also leads you to design trends. So on Pinterest and things like that, or just Googling, um, design trends, you can find yourself um, in the presence of a lot of very popular designs. Um, but going to a resource site like Adobe Stock and hunting for the bare bones, you know, looking for what designers who create pieces along those trends are looking for to create from scratch. That also leads you um, down a pretty accurate path of some some really great design ideas. Um, did you play any uh, Animal Crossing uh, over the holidays? Absolutely. You know I did. You know I did. Um, Val, did you pick your eyeshadow to match your virtual background? Nice color palette. I didn't do it on purpose, but these are my favorite, favorite colors. Um, purple, maroon, and black are my jam, uh, my bread and butter. So it's not surprising to me that it turned out like that. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Um, so this is a great place to go for um, design assets, design trends, um, and then off, obviously Adobe Fonts. Um, and Adobe Fonts is really excellent because uh, if you are like me and you maybe are less familiar than most people with font terminology, there's a really great um, kind of search system here on Adobe Fonts. So I use fonts every day. I've been using fonts in my projects professionally for eight years now and still sometimes I like I know what serif and sans serif means but I stick mostly to graphic design and predominantly illustration and painting um, and I forget these terms constantly. However, I know what funky means. I know what cursive is. I know what art deco is. I know what um, calligraphic means, brush pen. I know what all of these things are um, and I can come in and I can click, well, maybe I want a funky font. Maybe I want a funky font that is like very heavy so I can turn that weight up and I can start to kind of curate down a really great list of fonts that work for me. Um, I've got some pretty epic fonts picked out for you folks, which if you download the starter files in the coming challenges, you will actually get um, the Adobe fonts because all the fonts we're using are from Adobe fonts. So you'll have some pretty, pretty wild fonts picked out for you, but I urge you all to jump in here and um, kind of explore through all of these really excellent search um uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I just forgot. You ever just forget a word? Um, all of these um, search uh, classifications, specifications, and see if you can find some fonts that you really love. Um, and now we've got uh, a handful of minutes left and we're going to dive into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you folks um, a really excellent way to kind of get over the hump of designing on a blank canvas um, and start to lay out a great design. It's not going to look finished by the time I'm done here because these are just tips and pointers to get you started for the rest of today so we can dive into the challenges tomorrow. Um, but it is uh, kind of a challenge in and of itself. Um, so one thing that I would really love to challenge you folks to do today in the spirit of the new year, in the spirit of the poster a day challenge that we are doing um, for these challenges is I would love for everyone to think to themselves about a design trend or some kind of design element that they have always wanted to do. And I think we probably all have something like this in mind. A project that you would love to try, a, a method or a um, way of designing that you have never attempted before, but it have always thought looks super cool. Something that brings you joy, that inspires you, and let's try to do it today. I have a whole bunch of other design trends pick, picked out for you for the next nine challenges, uh, but this cover is yours. 
Uh, this is the start of this uh, challenge set. This is the moment that you get to create something that's going to represent the project um, that you create over the next couple of weeks. So kind of express yourself. Go out on a limb, um, find some reference, go to the resource sites that I shared with you today and find some either assets or colors or fonts or um, inspiration to do that thing that you have always been wanting to do. Um, and I'm going to give you kind of an interesting way to lay it out. So I am an illustrator and I love to use my stylus to draw and paint. Um, anytime I have to sketch something out, you folks will usually see me drawing, but not everybody has the opportunity to use a stylus. So one of the things that I want to do today and what I actually do myself sometimes when I'm doing graphic art versus illustration is I actually use my shape tool to line things up and lay things out. So I'm going to hide this poster a day here um, and I'm going to think to myself like what do I really want to do uh, with this piece? Um, and I think it would be cool to have a rounded corner border. So I'm going to drag um, this shape out here and I'm going to kind of line that up on my uh, with my grid. Um, I'm going to try not to be too precious about it. There we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill this um, with white for now. Um, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm actually going to paint bucket in black over here. I'm not going to um, keep that black background because I just want a border and I'm going to design in black and white today just so I can really keep my eye on the ball and look at the placement of things before I start adding color. Color will come later and you folks already know now where to get excellent colors. So I'll leave that to you for your project. Uh, but I want to round these corners. So I'm going to pull the corners in like so. I kind of like this look. Um, and then I'm just going to grab some more shapes and I'm going to start blocking in where other things could go, where the title could go, where information could go. Do I want some strange shapes or blobs kind of encroaching upon the corners of this piece? I think I do. I kind of like that vibe. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab this polygon tool um, and I'm going to drag this out. Um, and it is not something, let's see, I'm going to kind of give it some more sides here. This is not something that has to look perfect um, right when you get to it, okay? Uh, I'm going to change this to a gray color real quick, something like that, I think. Um, there we go. Um, like I said, this is not something that has to look incredible uh, when you first do it. We're just kind of getting ideas in here. Um, so I know that I want some kind of blob or design element in this corner. Oops, I did not mean to add that other one. Um, let's control T. I'm just going to put that here. Um, and I'm going to control J or command J if you were working on a Mac. Um, and I am going to control T and I'm maybe going to put one over here too. So I have these little design elements kind of, you know, poking in from the sides, which is cool. Um, I think maybe I'll unhide this and I will grab our poster a day. Um, and I am going to kind of drag this boom like that, but I think I'm going to leave it off center because I kind of like that vibe. Okay. Um, we got about two minutes. Oh no. Darn, <laughs> I got cut off. Oh shoot. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. I hope that if this is actually going to be um, showing the tail end of this that you can see me say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you folks tomorrow.